Well, what's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Project Time Garage here with another midweek tool review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the launch CRP129X Elite scan tool. Now this is an upgrade from the 123X model which added about five more functions for a total of eight hot functions. Those functions include TPMS reset, oil life reset, steering angle sensor, battery management system, electronic parking brake, throttle adaptation, DPF regen, and injector coating. Now they market this as a four-in-one tool, which means not only can it do OBD2 diagnostic functions, but it also supports emissions uh, monitor readiness. So if you're getting ready to go through emissions and um, you don't know if maybe your car is ready or all the systems have passed ready for check, then you can hook the tool up and it'll give you a, a clue as to what hasn't passed or what hasn't ran yet. Because let's face it, there's nothing worse than getting all the way to the emissions testing center, spending six hours, three minutes and 49 seconds in line just to realize that, yeah, car's not ready, come back later. I've been there a couple of times. That's frustrating. But also, this supports live data with playback and built-in DTC lookup, which means when you do have a code and you're not sure what that code means, the tool um, can connect to the internet and give you that information right here on the screen without you having to jump out to the Google machine or to the interwebs. So kind of handy in a little package here. Now this thing works out of the box with most major brands of vehicle made after 1996, which was largely the, uh, the, the onset of OBD2. Has Wi-Fi connectivity for those one-click updates and also the DTC lookup I talked about. Supports nine languages. That's really handy if you speak nine languages. It has a five-year warranty from the manufacturer. Now the price point on this is right at $250, at least at the time of recording this video, which if you look at the range of other launch um, products, they range anywhere from about $99 up to almost $3,000. So that puts this somewhere in the middle or lower third of scan tools offered by them. And in my opinion, this is kind of the sweet spot for the average DIY guy. You know, you have a few cars, you're into the hobby, you're an enthusiast. That's where this tool probably really shines. But you know, you know, also, I guess if you're, if you do this for a living, this thing's pretty small. So it, you could easily just throw it in your glove box and, you know, you have a scanner with you all the time. Um, I have some fairly large, quite expensive scanners that are in a case about the size of a suitcase. And I find myself carrying things like this, you know, around when I go places, like if I'm gonna go and maybe I'm gonna buy a car, I'm gonna take something like this, hook it up, check it out before I, you know, before I spend any money on it. At least I know what's going on. And this compact size, well, that helps out a lot. Now I'm gonna put a link uh, down at the bottom of this video. If you guys are looking for one of these, um, I'll put the link down there where you can get it. Just pause the video. For heaven's sakes, don't stop the video. You definitely want to watch this all the way through. Then like, share, comment, and all that at the end. But anyway, you can pause the video and scroll down there in the description box where it tells us about the video and whatever. You can scroll down there and look at those links, and one of those is going to be to this tool. Also, there's going to be a product discount code from the manufacturer, and I'll put that information down there too. So if you do want to buy one of these, you get a discount. Now's the time. So anyway, enough of my jabbering. Let's take this device, let's hook it up to a, a vehicle. Let's kind of look at it and see what all it can do and will do and, you know, look at its capabilities. Uh, because I just happen to have a vehicle, as usual, that has a check engine light on that I haven't scanned yet. So this is gonna be perfect. We'll put this thing to work, see what it can do. I'll see you in the car. Welcome to the car. We are currently sitting in a 2012 Ford Focus. Looks like we got about 180,000 miles on it and the check engine light is on. So we have our, um, our launch 129 here and we will power this thing on using the red button up top. I went ahead and plugged in the, uh, the data link connector um, from here down to the car. You know, I gotta say, uh, I really, I really like the feel of this thing, you know, just the way it is, it's, it just seems really nice and sturdy. I like to hold it. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. It just feels too good in the hands. I know that seems weird for a scan tool, but it does. Anyway, we're booting up here. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, now you'll notice as soon as it comes up, it starts, uh, you start playing um, the, the slot machine. And here in a minute, you'll possibly win. Yes, we're winning. Anyway, it goes ahead and, and automatically scans the car, which is kind of handy. That's a feature you can turn on and off through settings. Right now, out of the box, as soon as you plug it in and turn the tool on, it just tries to figure out what you're driving. In our case, it's going to be, uh, it's not EV. This is going to just be Ford. And 2012 Ford Focus, and are we ready to start the detection? So, yes. All right, so shows our VIN, shows our year, Ford Focus 2.0, uh, GDI engine, automatic trans. Yes, that is correct. All right, now the first thing it's going to do is it's going to come up with this diagnostics report. And um, basically, you can you can click on the share button down here, and you can send this to, a, to an email address. And basically what it's, it's showing you is it's kind of just a quick overall view of what's going on with a car. This isn't necessarily where we drill down and find information. But this is where, you know, where we could like shoot a report to the customer or shoot it to our email to include if we, you know, if we were a shop or whatever. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and back out of this. And this, as soon as it detects there are trouble codes, it goes ahead and, and pulls those up on the screens. I don't even really have to do anything in order to be able to read these codes. So in this case, I've got uh, ABS. I've got four abnormalities here. Uh, missing communication with ECM missing comms with TCM, and I got right rear and right left wheel speed sensor issues going on. Now, I don't know if those are active codes or if those are stored codes, who knows, but they're there for now. Then in the powertrain control module, this would be engine related stuff, uh, catalyst system efficiency less than threshold on bank one. Somebody probably needs a catalytic converter. So um, restraint control module is normal and transmission control module is normal. If you know anything about the little Ford Focuses and Fiestas and those little Fords with the dual clutch transmissions, you'll know that having no codes in the transmission, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen one that didn't have at least some code. Anyway, I have a couple options here. I can either clear the codes or I can hit report, which brings us back to the, the emailable report. Um, I'm not going to clear the codes just yet. I want to dig around a little bit and just kind of see what else is going on. So we're going to end this diagnostic session and we'll go back again. This brings us back to the home screen or the main screen of the tool. Before I delve any deeper into this particular vehicle, let's run through a couple of quick things. Under settings, um, this is where you can choose it uh, from metric to imperial. Um, there's also this little thing here that shows screen capture on and off. Notice that little camera that was up there just disappeared. When I turn it back on, that little camera comes back. Well, what that boils down to is it's, it's just a little, you can drag it around on the screen. It's a quick camera button. So anytime there's something on the screen, you can just tap it. It'll take a picture and it'll save the screenshot. I'll show you where to find those screenshots it saves here in a minute. But anyway, this is movable just because if it's right over the top of something you need to access, you can drag it out of the way to access what you're looking for. But anyway, it lives up in this area somewhere. This is where that automatic detection on connect comes in. Remember uh, I said earlier, as soon as you start the tool, it starts up and basically auto IDs the car and all that. Well, that's this thing here. That's If you turn that off, that'll stop. Um, other little things here, the display brightness, sound, network. This is where you would set it up on your Wi-Fi network if you so chose to do that. Set your time zone, your language. If you're a shop, this is where you put in all your shop information. And on that report that it generates, it'll have all your stuff on there. Um, recovery, basically this is a factory reset uh, of the tool. So if you have any you know, personal information or whatever in here and you decide to maybe sell the tool, you can reset it or we'll cancel that. Um, cleanup, basically just empties the cache. It's kind of an Android function. And we have the about screen. So this is basically uh, you know, the device information, CRP-129, the serial, the Mac, um, all of that junk. Um, 
basically nothing here that most people would be interested in. So we'll go back and we'll go back. Before we scan anything, basically we want to make sure that we do an update. Now this assumes that you have already put it on your wireless network and you can tell by the little icon right up there that we have. So we'll hit update. And if this is the first time using the tool, you're going to see a whole lot of updates available for it. Um, in my case, I've already done uh, all the major updates, but I will tell you that since I've done those updates, I do have four more updates available. Um, now, nothing that would affect me here today because I have an update for Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Honda Acura, Kia, and Nissan Infiniti uh, GTR. Um, obviously, we're at a Ford. None of those are affected, so that, that update is not there. If I'm in a hurry, I can jump out and go ahead and scan my car, update it later. But if I'm scanning, for example, a Kia, then I want to make sure I update that before I scan the Kia to get, you know, the latest information. So since we're in a video here, I'm going to back out of this. So let's go ahead and run through some of the things on the screen here that are interesting. The diagnose button, um, that's really just where we came from. That's kind of where the tool opens up. OBD2 is where we can get in and start looking at a lot of parameters on the, on the car. So we click OBD2 and it's gonna figure out what what it is and all that. It knows our VIN, it knows the uh, malfunction indicator light is on. Um, there is a DTC in this ECU. I, I know that's a mouthful, but there's a diagnostic trouble code found in this electronic control unit or this engine control unit or this engine control module or this computer, however you wanna say it. Um, eight readiness cycles or eight pieces of information for uh, readiness are done. Uh, nothing is not completed, so that's at a quick glance there. Uh, there are three modules that are not supported for readiness. We have uh, 40 items that we'll be able to see in a data stream. We know it's a spark ignition and protocols CAN bus. So let's just hit enter. And basically these are the things that I can do. I can look at uh, read IM readiness. So if I click there, and ready status after DTC is cleared. I can go into this. And this basically tells me quickly, if I'm getting ready to go through emissions, I want to look here and I want to make sure that all of the things that are supported say ready. So I'm in the engine control. I know that it's checked misfire fuel system, comprehensive component monitor, catalyst monitor, heated EVAP. Um, well, it hadn't checked uh, heated catalyst because that's not supported on this car, which means that module is not something that it checks for. Um, also, as you get down to the end, you'll notice that there are two pages, but I'm only on one page. The way you get down to the second page is you basically scroll to the bottom of the page you're on, and then you pull up a little further and let go, and you'll be in the second page. So um, basically everything that is supported is ready which means I could drive the car through emissions right now. And if it weren't for that darn check engine light right there, it would, it would probably be good to go. So let's back up again. And there are two, uh, there are two different pieces of information with this, uh, with this drive cycle monitor. There is the status during this driving period. Let's jump in here and look. And that just basically means um, what has happened since I started driving the car this time? And the difference is, this is since the DTCs were last cleared, which who knows how long ago that's been. I, I haven't done it. Um, coming back out to the main menu, um, we have uh, the live data mode. So I can click live data. And this is where I can start seeing some information um, about the car to see what it's doing. You see I have 40 items here. It said earlier that we had 40 items in the data stream. So if I want to see like, I don't know, um, engine coolant temp and R RPMs, for example, I can select those and it'll show me that the coolant temp is 190 and the RPM is, you know, 810, 820, whatever. I can also graph it right here. And, you know, over time I can tell you know, I can see on the graph what, what's going on here. So there's that. So I'll back up here. Now, as far as what all is, whoops, let me go back in there. 
Now, as far as what all is supported in live data, I want you to keep in mind that this is generic OBD2 data. This is not uh, OE specific. And what I mean by that is the OBD2 is a standard. So pretty much all vehicles that adhere to OBD2 standards will report some basic information. Most of the time, this basic information is what uh, is kind of a broad overview of what's going on with the car. So things like coolant temp, throttle position, um, those type things, particularly with emissions control type stuff. So um, obviously the, um, the reason these scanners can all read OBD2 is because most all vehicles are standard when it comes to that. Now, you can get deeper into what the vehicle is going to report, and that's called OE specific. So uh, Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, all the manufacturers out there, they will have much deeper, much more in-depth information um, that you can get to. But obviously, this is not a scan tool that's going to do that for you. You'll need a far, far bigger scan tool to be able to go into some of that specific OE stuff. Um, but that's just kind of how that works. That's typical. So understand that all the information I'm getting out of this car right now is coming across the standard OBD2 data set. So anyway, um, things like throttle position, uh, ambient air temperature, barometric pressure, load, all your fuel trim stuff, um, you know, again, that's, that's gonna be some emissions type stuff. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what I can expect to see um, here in the, in the live data stream. So uh, quite a bit of stuff. A lot of times the newer the vehicle, the more stuff you're gonna see in the data stream. It just different cars will put out more stuff than, you know, than others. So we'll go back here. There's also freeze frame information and freeze frame data is helpful when you get a check engine light. And basically freeze frame just basically means what, what was a snapshot of everything on the car at the time that DTC was set. So, you know, what was the ambient air temperature? How fast were you going? What was the fuel trim? Were you open loop or closed loop? The, all those things to kind of give you an idea of what was happening at that time. It's kind of like a snapshot in time of everything. So we can tell that this DTC that was set was set at 29% load, which kind of sounds like idle almost. Throttle position was about 14%, which again, sounds like idle. Um, you also have several different throttle positions here. Um, um, ambient air temp was 69 degrees, so it was kind of cool. Uh, the catalyst was 1200. Uh, calculated load value was 54%. Evap purge was 69. I was kind of looking to see how fast the car was going. So engine RPM was 1800. 177 engine coolant. So we were um, that we were so we were up and going. The DTC that caused the required freeze frame data was PO420. That's our um, that's our um, catalyst issue. So, and how fast were we going? Let's just scroll down to the bottom and see if it'll show us vehicle speed. We were running 49.712 miles per hour when this, uh, when this PO420 was set. So there we go. That's, that's the information that happened when PO420 came into existence. So we'll go back again. We'll go back again. Um, I, we can also, this, the read fault code, this is, this is kind of the same thing as earlier. It's just showing that we have a current PO420 code that's right now, and we have a pending PO420 code, and we have a permanent PO420 code. All that means, PO420, is an active code, and if you clear it, it's just gonna come right back. We probably need a catalytic converter on the car, would be my guess. So we'll back up. Um, now, we have this control operation of onboard component system, and I almost think this is like for live for live testing or, or almost like bi-directional, but I don't think the, the tool supports it. If we click it, it, t it says test conditions are not met, we can't do it. So we hit yes and we just go back. So anyway, that's the, that's the diag function portion of it. So we'll end this. Um, we looked at IM, now this is the reset uh, thing. These are the eight, the eight things that it can do. You know, the brake, oil, um, steering angle, uh, battery, electronic throttle, TPMS, TPMF, and injector uh, that it can do. Um, obviously, not everything applies to every car. For example, we wouldn't do a DPF regen on a gasoline car, but um, the cars that, that it would 
that would support this, it would uh, you know, obviously it would probably work for. So uh, unfortunately, none of the things here are things that this car supports. So this is a little bit too old for it. Uh, for example, um, you know, uh, electric parking brake reset, no electric parking brake on this. So that's what I mean. Not everything is supported from every car. The newer cars, yeah, most of this stuff would probably be supported. So we'll jump back. Whoops, we'll back up here. Yes, I want to cancel that. I don't want to go into brake reset. Back. Yep. Let's go back again. Um, battery voltage. This just basically will give you a graph of what your battery battery's doing. I, I would assume that if I turn the headlights on, I would see some kind of a dip in battery voltage. And there was my little dip going by right there. So there's that. Um, the whole data thing, basically this is just, um, this just is basically information on the car. So this would be your diagnostic report, the DTC library. So for example, it said we had a PO420. So if we want to know what that is, PO then 420. So we put in PO420, okay, and catalyst system efficiency below threshold. This is what I was talking about earlier. Really handy to be able to see this. If I wanna, you know, keep this for later viewing, I can just pick a screenshot of it. Now I've got it there and I can back on up. Um, DLC, this just tells you where the where the data link connector is located in the car. Now this one is, um, it's a little bit more vague. It's either over there, over there, over there, up here or over there. Um, in, in my case, it's down there behind a little uh, access door. So um, it could be in any of those places, basically. That's what that's telling you. If we look at the image deal here, this is where we can see the things that we uh, screenshotted. For example, this guy right here. This is our um, PO420 code that we, that we screenshotted earlier. We can come back and look at it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if I want if I want to share one I can put a little check mark in there click share and I can type in an email address and a message and send it interestingly though I'm kind of curious about where this email comes from let's send something to ourselves and see what we get so we'll click this and share and receiver we'll call this project time garage at GMA L.com. Ooh, that's ah, not good. Project Time Correct. It actually corrected all of this. That's not good. There we go. Nope. Project Time Garage at gmail.com. Diagnostic. Sin. I'm just curious to see what it does. Says it sent it. Well, as it turns out, the email comes from um, launch. So that would be diagnostic underscore report at cnlaunch.com. And this says, dear customer, comma, has given you a diagnostic screenshot. I assume that if you change your information inside the uh, machine itself, you know, to put in your personal garage information or whatever, I assume it would say something like Project Time Garage has given you a diagnostic screenshot. Anyway, you can, uh, you can click there to download it. So we'll click there. And this is what it, this is basically what it boils down to. And I guess at this point I could, I'm sure I could right click and save the image somewhere on my workstation, not a big deal. So anyway, yeah, that's how that works. So we'll back up out of here. Um, firmware fix, that's just, uh, if if the deal, if, if your VCI isn't working, you can do that, but we're not using a VCI here, it's just a, a DLC. So we can back that up. Maybe we wait for it for a second. There we go. Frequently asked questions. Um, when the system crashes, reading data, um, hopefully you won't have to ever use anything like this, but there it is if you need it.
jump back in over, jumping back over to the main menu. Here's another thing that's pretty interesting about this tool and something that I actually really like about it. They've got the mall here, and basically it's just an app store for the for the device. So if we jump into the mall, if you want to expand your capabilities of this, um, you know, for example, you know, you want to do ABS service bleed. It's uh, it was fifty nine dollars. Now it's thirty four dollars. It's a one time, so you buy it and now your your device can do ABS. That's pretty cool because you know you're not having to spend all the money up front on the tool. You know, if you buy the tool and you don't have anything that has ABS bleed or whatever, then you're not paying for it up front. If later down the road you run across something you need it, thirty four bucks later your tool can handle that. So. You know that's uh, that's kind of worth it. That that really again speaks to the the whole hobbyist enthusiast community. You know. So anyway, there's all kind of stuff here that you can you know do. A lot of it has to do with um, uh, you know different um, different kind of vehicles like you know Malaysian Proton and the Chinese SGM Buick. So you can actually scan those vehicles like Mahindra. You know that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's uh, that's the mall and that's how that works. So we can jump back here. And I think that pretty much um, that pretty much takes care of all of that. Um, you know, again, it's it's just a really cool little scanner. I, I love. I, I I can't say how much I really like the way it feels in your hand. Um, it feels like you're gonna go play some maybe some games or something with it. I don't know. Anyway, I hope this video helps somebody out. If you're looking for one of these devices, um, if you are looking some looking for something to you know throw in your drawer as an auto uh, enthusiast or whatever then this would probably be a solid choice for you also. Um, anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you gained something from this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. Guys, I'll see you next time.